Here is a very important method to find quadratic equation of a given sequence. I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my YouTube channel and the website Global Math Institute. In this video, we'll take up a very important test question based on sequences. The question here is, write an explicit rule to define the following sequence, then find the tenth term. Well, the sequence is 0, 5, 12, 21, and so on. I would like you to pause the video, answer the question, and then look into my suggestions. In case you want to learn from me, feel free to send an email on the address given. Now, let's look into the sequence given to us, which is 0, 5, 12, 21, and so on. Well, in any sequence, we call them as the term values, and let's write down the term numbers. So on the left side, I'm writing the term numbers. So this is term number 1, this is term number 2, 3, and 4 we do have to find the value of 10th term also. Now, how do we figure out the explicit rule? To find the explicit rule, one of the best ways is to find the finite difference. It's like y2 minus y1, right? So, we'll do 5 minus 0, which is 5. 12 minus 5, which is 7, and 21 minus 12, which is 9. We see that this finite difference is not constant, so that means it is nonlinear. Now, what could it be? Let's go for the second finite difference. So, if you do the second finite difference, we get 7 minus 5, which is 2. 9 minus 7 is also 2. So that means it is quadratic, right? Since it is constant, right? So since it is quadratic, we could write this in an equation which will be quadratic in form. So explicit rule, I could write in function notation also. So we can write this as f of x equals to ax square plus bx plus c. It is quadratic since the second finite difference is constant. Now many of you might note that the second finite difference which is 2 relates to the value of a. So a is normally equals to 2 divided by 2 which is 1. So if you know that, that helps, you know, you can figure out what A could be. A will be 1. So that's one way of getting the value of A very fast. Now to get the value of C, it will be a good idea to follow this pattern in the reverse order and see what could be the value when, when the term number is like 0, right? Initial value, which normally is 1, but a term before that. No harm, right? Well, if this is the finite difference, then clearly, if I go backwards, then also the difference should be 2, right? Difference of 2 here really means that what could be that value? Well, that value before 5 should be what? This is what we are looking into, right? So, that value has to be 3, right? Now, how do I get 3 here? 3 is the value which you could get 0 minus something, right? So we are doing the reverse calculation, right? So 0 minus what will give me 3? So that should be minus 3, right? 0 minus minus 3 will be 3. Make sense? So from the reverse calculation, we did see that there should be a point 0 minus 3 also on this particular pattern, right? Of course, we are given the values on the right side of 0, not on the left, but you could extend and figure it out. 
So that helps. So we found a new point which was not given to us, which is 0 minus 3. And that helps because if I substitute 0 for x, then I get the value of c, right? So, so if I put what is f of 0, which we know is 3, and here we get equal to 0 plus 0 plus c. And that gives you the value of c as minus 3. You get the idea. So we got the value of a as 1 and c as minus 3. So we know a equals to 1 and c equals to minus 3. And that means that the function f of x should be equal to x squared plus bx minus 3. To find the value of b, we could use our point, which is 1, 0, correct? So to find the value of b, we are going to use the point 1, 0. So if I substitute 1, then I should get 0 as the output. 1 means 1 plus b minus 3, right? So that means the value of b should be what? Well, 0 equals to 1 minus 3 is minus 2 plus b, and that gives you the value of b as equal to 2, correct? So b is equal to 2. You get the idea. Now we know b is 2. So in this particular equation, we can now substitute the value of b as 2 and write down our equation. You get this. So we have our function f of x as equal to what? f of x is equal to x squared plus bx, which is plus 2x minus 3. Make sense? Do you see how easily we got this particular equation from the given situation? Perfect. So once again, let's look into this particular solution. What we did was that we had these values, 0, 5, 12, and 21. So from these values, we found the first difference, correct? The first difference, 5 minus 0 was 5, 12 minus 5 was 7, 21 minus 5 was 9, and then we saw that, well, the second difference is 2. Clearly, it is quadratic in nature. We also extended it on the left side. Seeing that this difference should be 2, right, how can we get the term when the term number is not 1 but 0? So these values were for term number 1, 2, 3, 4, right? So these were the term numbers. We wanted to find the value for 0th term. So back, backward working showed us that this should be 3. And how can I get 3? From minus 3, I can get 3, right? 0 minus minus 3 is 3. So because of this, I have again made this table for you to understand, right? And now I could write my equation giving me the value for y equals to ax squared plus bx plus c. And we calculated from here that the value of c is equal to minus 3, the value of a is equal to 1, since the finite difference is 2, correct? And then substituting one of the values, which is 1, 0, we found the value of b as 2, and therefore we got our solution, which was x squared plus 2x minus 3. Make sense? So we got our function f of x equals to x squared plus 2x minus 3. You can actually verify if the other, by putting x as one of these values and see whether do we get the same result, right? Perfect. Now, let's find the tenth term, which is the other part of this question. How do we find the tenth term? Simply substitute 10 for x, right? So f of 10 will be 10 squared plus 2 times 10 minus 3, which is 100 plus 20 minus 3, right? So 120 minus 3 gives us the 10th term, which is 117, correct? So the 10th term is going to be 
117 and that is how we will do the second part of this particular equation of finding the tenth term. So once you have the relation it is not that difficult. I hope it makes sense. Well, feel free to write your comment, share your views. If you like and subscribe to my videos, it would be great. And in case you want to learn from me, send an email on the address given. Thanks for your time and all the best.